you know, people ask me all the time, uh, how do I get the best sound out of my amplifier? Yeah. And I tell them to turn it off. Welcome to another episode of Contrabass Conversations, your show covering life on the low end of the spectrum. I'm your host, Jason Heath, and we are chatting today with Rick Jones of Acoustic Image. I ran into Rick at the ISB convention in 2017 in beautiful Ithaca, New York. And Rick and I sat down for this conversation about what Acoustic Image is up to, where they've been, how Rick started the company, the prototype he brought to the convention, so many other topics like that. I know you're going to enjoy this chat. And I'd like to thank Diderio Strings for sponsoring Contrabase Conversations, sponsoring ISB 2017. They'll be sponsoring Base Europe in 2018. Thank you for everything you do for the bass community. And another thing they're doing for the bass community is giving away 10 sets of Kaplan Strings to people who listen to Contrabase Conversations. If you go to ContrabaseConversations.com slash strings, you can enter to win a chance at getting a set of Kaplan strings. And I've been using Kaplan's and love them. They're great pizzicato strings. They're great under the bow. And like all D'Addario strings, they're designed, engineered, and crafted at their New York facility. I'd also like to thank the Bass Violin Shop, which offers the Southeast's largest inventory of basses. And they offer professional setups, repairs, and restorations at reasonable prices. So whether you've got an open seam or you need a top-off restoration, the Bass Violin Shop is there to help you through the process. You can check them out at BassViolinShop.com. All right, here we go with our conversation with Rick Jones of Acoustic Image. I'm a I'm an improvising musician. Hey, there so. we go. So we know what we're doing. So in this, in this. whatever comes out. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. <laughs> um, and maybe before we talk about the, the the new product, just like I mean, we we're just chatting about the the how you got into starting Acoustic Image, and you're a player yourself, and right. like what right. what what inspired you to to start the company and start making the products? Well, I. I uh, one of my amplifiers blew up. Okay. <laughs> and so I needed to get a new amplifier. And I picked one up the day of a gig. Uh-huh. And I went to the gig and I started to play and I could not get the right sound out of it. It just, no matter what I did, and I found myself the whole night concerned about this and tweaking knobs and dials. And I said, got to do something about this. This, mm-hmm. this isn't the way, I mean, you can't make music. It gets mm-hmm. in the way. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, I decided uh, the speaker system could be improved, and I knew something about that. I had dabbled in that, so decided to start there. Built my own speaker systems, bought a Walter Woods amp, which, of course, is not going to have all of these built-in uh, voicings, which screwed me up in the other case. And so I paired those two. That worked out very well, and I, I got me a really nice system that had a subwoofer and a uh, speaker on a pole yeah. and so forth. And I was getting into an elevator one night with a vibes player I was playing a gig with, and I couldn't get my bass, my rig, and him and his vibes in the elevator. I said, "Wow, <laughs> this is this is going the wrong way." You yeah. Know? yeah. So I tried to figure out how can I make this small and light so that it's really easy to get in and out of the gig. And at the time, I was a full-time engineer working in the fiber optic telecommunications business. Okay. I had started a company in the uh, late 80s, which eventually went public. But it was during that time, I'd be sitting in meetings, and I would sort of draw out concepts. And I wish I had kept some of those notebooks, but you know, the meetings would get boring. I start drawing out a, a, speak, a concept for speaker system. And one of the things that occurred to me is, first of all, uh, if you bring a, a speaker close to a boundary, its output increases. Okay, sure. So uh, uh, that way you can make a small speaker sound bigger. So I said, well, what if I put the speaker on the bottom of the cabinet, close to a boundary? Now a a 10-inch speaker or an 8-inch speaker could sound bigger than that and maybe reproduce a bass acceptably. And then the other thing I was thinking about is uh, most of the problems with square speakers come from the fact that the panels vibrate. I mean, you don't, they don't buzz, but they vibrate and they color the sound. Okay. So a lot of bracing is put into cabinets to prevent that and so forth. But a cylinder is inherently stiff. A cylinder can only go like this. You know, it can only radiate radially. Yeah, yeah. And because it can be you know, made so it doesn't do that. So 
thin materials could be put in a cylindrical shape to make a light cabinet that didn't have all of the panel resonances, et cetera, that, uh, that a uh, conventional square cabinet. So round cabinet with a uh, speaker on the bottom. Okay, was, so that so that keeps that's great because coloring the sound that's what you don't want right that's necessarily right. that mm-hmm. way you get the, as as the name of the acoustic image right like that's an actual right. image of what there was what, there yeah. was thought that went I into that it. name I get it <laughs> and and I just they're, they're so portable so like on behalf of me and all the bass players backs across the world thank you for like addressing that because I can't tell you how many times I've thrown out something like moving heavy gear or colleagues of mine and it's it's great to get that and so like having the speaker on the bottom uh, and having the right like so, so maybe talk about what you've done most recently like what's this what's the newest uh, product look like well uh, what I've been working on is trying to make the product even lighter okay uh, and uh, there's a prototype at our booth yeah. of that it's it's pretty ugly looking okay. but I, I wanted to bring it so I could show it to people to say does the does the lightweight offset the ugliness? I mean, because our other products look very nice. Yeah, I mean, they're right. very well designed and so forth. This doesn't look as nice. And so far, the consensus has been been give me the light product. I, as long as it you know doesn't look horrible, yeah. then then I can use it. We had Martin Wind in the booth. He played his bass through it, uh, a microphone and pickup mixed. Okay. And it sounded fantastic. The other thing that's different about this new system is with the downfiring woofer, you get omnidirectional output because the, the sound waves bounce off the floor. And sure. No, normally, a speaker at a certain frequency starts to beam, okay. so it narrows its output as a function of frequency. The uh, uh, downfiring woofer doesn't have that problem because whatever beams bounces off the floor and becomes omnidirectional. But what I've done with this one is put the uh, uh, mid-frequency driver up firing and put a reflector over it, a parabolic reflector, so it has a oh, omni- omnidirectional okay. output. So it, okay. what it does is it opens the sound stage. You know, a bass and a guitar are both omnidirectional instruments. Yeah. So to try and uh, mimic that, this is an attempt at that. And okay, okay, so it ver- in, uh, okay, that makes sense. And uh, how much lighter is well, that? Well, it's uh, 15 pounds. And I, I, I can tell you, try as I might, I can't get it any lighter than that. Okay. That's maybe maybe, light. maybe that's, a pound yeah. or two, but yeah. in order to have decent performance mm-hmm. and uh, be light, that's about as light as it can get. And that's, that's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. I think you, people can handle a 15-pound speaker pretty well. And and so th- this is a prototype. It's a prototype. Do, yeah. Do you have a uh, timeline in mind for when this, if if this happens, when it might be available, like t- the next next year or so, well, or maybe uh, two years ago, I brought a different prototype uh-huh. to the ISB and uh, uh, had people play through it, and it sounded okay. And then myself, I played through it. Yeah, took it on gigs regularly, and it didn't quite cut it yeah I just couldn't I mean I was using eight inch drivers and I said that just isn't enough to make it work uh, so you do one of two things you make it a bigger driver mm-hmm. in order to move more air or you make the eight inch driver move more okay it's called excursion so you add to the excursion to get more air moved by it and what happens is when you get more excursion you have to make the magnet bigger and so this this small cabinet ended up weighing 35 pounds. Oh, and okay, I, I okay, said, yeah. no, that's not going to make it. <laughs> Sounded great, but so you know, I went in a little different direction with a 12-inch driver in this new one. Okay. So can move more air without having larger excursion, so it can have a smaller magnet. Okay. Okay. How? And way what, less. What's the like? What's the weight of of what the the, the current acoustic image? Well, the uh, uh, the smaller combo amp weighs 22 pounds. 22. Okay. So that's amplifier plus speaker. Okay. The uh, larger one, the one we're mm-hmm. looking at in the booth, that weighs thirty pounds. Okay, and this new and, and, by, and, and by comparison, no, that's a, that's a two by ten system, and now typically a two by ten system weighs forty forty five pounds, so yeah. it's a lot lighter. Okay, than yeah, sure. uh, uh, than than the one by I mean than a typical two by ten, but still, that's a fair amount of weight. Yeah, for around. for like um, I'm I'm such a, I'm like I, I almost never play amplified, so I'm like such a novice with all this sort of like what what sort of venue would I be looking at that that an amp like that would be appropriate for versus like the smaller one that you've got right now? Well, yeah, both of them would work well in a uh, in a club. Okay. 
Okay. You know, in a uh, folk or jazz type club. Yeah. Uh, and if you got into a large hall, uh, you'd use a PA system. And plug in. Okay. So, so this would end up being a stage monitor. So this works, and, yeah. would really work for yeah. pretty much any situation really you're going to be playing in. Right. Now, you mentioned that you're, you're mostly acoustic. You know, people ask me all the time, uh, how do I get the best sound out of my amplifier? Yeah. And I tell them to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> get the sound out of the hands first, and then, you know, give the amplifier something to amplify. Yeah, oh, that's great. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's and then I'll, I'll do my best to give you uh, as natural a sound as possible, but you get your sound first, and then we'll take it from there. Well, boy, I mean, f 22 pounds versus 15 pounds, I mean, that's, that's a tremendous difference. It, it's and, a big difference, yeah. In, mm -hmm. in when you're and when you're carrying a a base and a stand and all the other gear right, that you're right. that you're taking like you know seven pounds is, is huge. It, it's it's a, it's a noticeable yeah. thing, especially as you get older. Yeah, <laughs> as I speak as, from experience. As we all are, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's great. And what a great what a great idea to take the prototype to a thing like the International Side Basses Convention because you got you know fourteen hundred plus right. bass players here and yeah. and they uh, most of them know me well enough that they're not going to BS me. They're going to tell me what they think. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, this is this is a fairly small community, and I've gotten to know a lot of these folks and gotten to be a part of the community, so feedback is honest, and I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Well, can, thank you so much for what you've done for the bass community with what, so far, and it's great to see you continue to innovate, and uh, I'll send people to the site uh, for okay. sure, and and look forward to seeing if this, if this comes to market. It sounds like a great... Uh, great uh, new direction okay great so, good thank you all right thank you thanks again for chatting rick and folks check out what rick's got and what acoustic image is up to at their website acousticimg.com Rick, I appreciate you taking the time it's uh, such a busy event these conventions and the time of the exhibitors like Rick, it's so valuable. So pulling people away, I try to be sensitive and chat quickly and get them back so they can do what they're there to do, which is interact with a bunch of bass players. And we had almost 1,500 people at this convention. Isn't that crazy? But most bass players, obviously, in the world couldn't make it to that event. And I'm so thankful that I'm in this role where I can go to events like the ISB convention and cover them and bring you this coverage so that you can follow along virtually with this event. And whether you were there or not, I'm sure you have a bass player in your life that would love to hear about what Rick's up to at Acoustic Image. So share this episode, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, email it to a friend, go to ContraBaseConversations.com, pick an episode, it could be an episode at random, whatever, or one of the last 10, 15 episodes, share that out as well. That helps the show grow, that helps sustain the show more than you can imagine. Get our app if you don't have our app, ContraBaseConversations.com slash app. It's newly redesigned. You can search for any topic of interest to you and check out all the episodes we've got on that topic. Thanks again for tuning in, and we will be back again very soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum. Bye.